Hi, it's uh, Jeff Pulver, and welcome back to day two of Blue Lava 2022. We have a great day of uh, presentations ahead of us. I'd like to thank everyone who's joining, joining us live, listening on the playback. Just looking forward to another day of great content. Uh, today's focus is Web 2 to Web 3. We have three talks. The first one is going to be about the transition to Web 3. And I just tweeted the uh, link to the slides, and it will be shared again. And uh, when our first presenter is up, if you just click, I'm sure you'll be able to find the slides there too, but if you can click on me, you'll find the, the slides to transition to Web3. Following that will be a, we'll call it a fireside chat, although there's no fire around us, but it's going to be between Mark and Zuko talking about opportunities and challenges from Web2 to Web3. And uh, finally, the uh, closing talk today will be uh, Web3 Cloud Storage, brought to you by Mo uh, Siam. I want to um, say uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I know we have a global audience. We're grateful to have so many wonderful people listening, connecting with us uh, throughout the day. I'll give a shout out to uh, Santi, who is uh, co-hosting with uh, us today. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I'm excited for today. Whole different, uh, whole different range of topics. Uh, some awesome speakers, as you noted. So, yeah, I'm really, really excited to hear what uh, what comes out of today. Do you have a big takeaway from yesterday? I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was fun. Um, it, it was just so different, right, than the other days we have planned. So yes. hopefully we're bringing a, a, a kind of diverse group of topics to people who, who join throughout the days. But, yeah, yesterday was, was awesome hearing about, you know, real real kind of introduction and developer-focused talks that on, on, you know, how people can join Web3 space and what they should expect. Um, also, you know, some of the road bumps people are going to face in their journey starting in Web3. You know, we've seen it as a company at Agoric, and many have seen it, obviously, in their own products they're building. And so, yeah, being able to kind of consolidate that into an hour and a half is a challenge. But I think our speakers did a really good job of uh, bringing people to the foreground of what, what it's going to be like to build in this space, but they haven't yet. So, yeah. And I appreciate the complexity that was shared, the details there, the uh, the availability of our speakers to those who tweeted them who wanted to, to for follow-ups and it's just a wonderful place very wonderful and very relevant time to be connected with us and to join that journey as, as more and more people are going to be con going from web 2 to web 3. I, I believe we're living in times where the opportunities are truly unbounded and it's been a very long time since this opportunity has presented the development community as it does today. Absolutely. Well uh, do you want to just for 30 seconds tell people what Agoric does for those who are tuning in who don't know? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think at the, I'll keep it very, very high level. Um, you know, our, our goal at Agoric was always to make, um, you know, decentralized cooperation, make it a reality. And the team that's come together at Agoric, you know, one of them, well, two of them actually spoke yesterday, Dean Tribble and Chris Kowal, um, along with, you know, Mark Miller and, and Brian Warner, who are some of the other founders and Bill Tello. They, they kind of sat around and figured, you know, we've been working with JavaScript as a language for a long time. Um, and we've also been working <laughs> with smart contracts for even longer than blockchain. Um, and what Agoric really does is merges those two things into, um, into several different um, technologies that allow people who have familiarity with JavaScript development language to be able to build in the Web3 space. And, you know, one of the difficulties we've seen with the development space in Web3 is, you know, accessibility, familiarity, right? The ability to create truly kind of composable smart contracts that allow you know, developer shops, independent developers to be able to build quickly and have something sooner than later, right? Everything's about moving fast. And so Agoric really puts JavaScript smart contracts at the front and makes that experience, uh, I think, much smoother in the long run for developers who, who again, want to get into the space for the first time. So, you know, our focus is looking at those 10 million plus JavaScript developers. Will all of them do it? Probably not. But it's a really, really big pool of people who are interested in this space. And that's kind of what we're doing. Um, so hopefully that was uh, uh, our CEO, Dean Tribble, approved. But um, that's, yeah, that's the high level. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I just wanted to provide some context. And I think the, for people to realize that smart contracts were there before blockchain is a revelation. Yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I, you know, we'll get into that later, perhaps. But I want to onboard our first speaker, uh, Monica, who's going to be talking about the transition to Web3 from the company and the journey. So uh, without really any further ado, I'd like to uh, ask uh, our first speaker to come forward and join us. Hello. Hi, welcome. Welcome hey. to Blue Lava. Thank you. I was just going to say that Agoric was not the OG, but the OJ. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, great to be here. So could you uh, talk a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us what we're going to, would you be uh, sharing today? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I actually also tweeted out the slides, which I think you also shared. So Yes, uh, but, yeah. but if people were to click on your icon inside of Twitter Spaces, they'll have a direct link to the slides. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so, you know, like, this conversation is so relevant to us, uh, especially right now, because we are transitioning into Web3 very rapidly, actually. And, uh, and just sort of, you know, our journey, having been in the Web2 space for a while and providing enterprise use cases and building for enterprise brands, uh, and then really sort of shifting that to Web3, I think, um, you know, I think it's just, it's been also revolutionary to us as to how quickly everything is changing and, and why it's changing and why we need to be, be here as well. That's what I'll talk about really is just our journey as well. And Monica, for those for those who might not be on the slides or, or know who you are, can you kind of share a brief kind of brief background in, in the company you're working with? I am the co-founder at Smart Gift and Toffee. And uh, just as a background, uh, we've built, uh, we've brought to market really exceptional products for uh, enterprise brands and companies uh, to engage their customers and employees. Um, I don't, I'm sure some of you have used Smart Gift on your favorite brands, and otherwise you can check us out on, you know, Timberland, Pandora, 1-800 Flowers, Aveda, Mac, etc. So over 40 global brands use the Smart Gift technology. And what we did is we really pioneered gift commerce. So we enable a gift checkout for brands on their product pages with which their consumers can gift a product without knowing the shipping address, the details like size, color, et cetera. And the recipients can, you know, uh, really partake in that and participate and choose their preferences, choose their shipping address. All of this happens before the products ship. In doing that, we really unlocked, uh, you know, really unlocked brand engagement for, um, you know, for, for these brands because before that they had no idea who was a recipient, who was a gifter, what were their favorite products, and uh, and we unlocked. We reduced return rates for them by almost 30 to 40 percent and also unlocked new customer acquisition in recipients for them. So that's a smart gift. And recently we launched our corporate engagement platform. So what happened is companies started coming to us and they were basically, you know, with obviously the great resignation and just, you know, people scrambling to find good talent, companies were you know, they've realized that we need to be in front of uh, our employees and customers in very meaningful ways. So they started coming to us and asking us really to be able to serve their needs. So we launched our corporate engagement platform um, three months ago, which has been utilized now by almost 70 companies, so such as Deloitte, KPMG, Charles Schwab. So very, you know, as you can see, our focus and our DNA has been very enterprise um, uh, enterprise led. And, um, and And that's where we are today. So, you know, just to sort of, um, I guess, extend on that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so what we are seeing, like, you know, is like, obviously, with the massive shifts happening in the workplace culture, and these companies sort of uh, really kind of scrambling to figure out what is the next way for me to really get that new, you know, access to that new talent, that new candidate. Um, and what they have been offering so far is just very old and stodgy workplace recognitions and rewards. So as this sort of transition from Web 2 to Web 3 happen, is happening, simultaneously we believe that there's the same equal you know, shift between this, what we coined as workplace culture 2 and workplace culture 3 happening at the same time. So you have these companies who are kind of providing the same rewards, the same recognitions, the same toasters, and, you know, um, baseball hats, etc. And on the other end, you have employees who really now want agency, they want ownership, they participate in multiple projects, they are distributed around the world. And, and, and so there's this big gap that what we are doing with our transition into Web3 is what we are serving. Fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. I'll, I'll let you keep speaking, but I think that's great, right? Because you have yeah. a very traditional Web2 focus and there's a Web3 demand. So yeah, please, please talk about how, how you've made that uh, transition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, yeah, so we recently just developed Toffee, so you can check us out on Toffee.io, and uh, and what we did is really, you know, it's the world's first fully tokenized uh, retention and engagement platform. So it, there's an employee wallet, and there's a platform that we have, you know, because of our Web2 presence and because of the platform that we had already built out. We were very we were very quickly able to launch this, uh, which is fully automated. So we're integrated into Salesforce, into HRS systems, into collab into collab platforms, and we enable enterprises to be able to send and um, create NFTs by which they can really sort of you know on chain recognition and rewards. So it's about credentialing people 
uh, you know, employees, uh, instead of just sending them a gift, but you can actually sort of really have it on chain as their immutable source of their work journey or their immutable source of career skills and, you know, um, trainings that they have enabled, uh, that they have collected over time. And with that, we've also been able to unlock an employee wallet. And with the employee wallet now, what's the beauty of this is that it stays with the employee for the rest of their work life, so for their entire career. So it's their immutable source of truth, it's their open sea of work wins, if you will. And, and from that, we're also being able to uh, act, you know, open up DeFi for them. So one part is the NFTs that they can collect, they can share, they can really flex and hold them right as their collectibles of their journey. Um, and then the second part is that you can also attach real life products to these NFTs, gift cards, very soon we're enabling crypto as well so that employees can access DeFi, can stake, can swap, uh, all of that. So for us, the use case really has been how do you bring everyday utility to NFTs and to Web3 and the enterprise world? And how do you really unlock what employees want now um, you know, from their companies and build, and build that workplace culture tree? Interesting. Okay. Are, they, are your clients giving you guidance as you um, create the tech? Or like, how are you seeing the culture evolve? You know, what's been so fascinating, Jeff, is uh, so the companies that work with us today and, you know, obviously as we're launching Toffee and we're talking to them about this, it's been so fascinating to see all these companies saying, hey, we have, you know, we know we need to get in. We know Web3 is happening, but we just don't know how to do this. And also until now, I think just sort of this rise of NFTs, I think in the mainstream sort of mindset, it's been all about, oh, are these not just JPEGs? Like, can you actually do something with them, right? So the, the minute we tell them, like, you know, you can do on-chain credentialing, you can add, you can deposit crypto, you can add gift cards, you can add products, you can, you know, basically it's, you can do so many, you know, it opens up this whole world for you. They're just fascinated. And what we are finding for us, at least in our quick adopt, in our early adoption, is that the fast growing tech companies are really, they want in. They want to be able to, you know, do this new way of rewards and recognitions, because that's what sort of the new talent wants. That's what the younger talent wants. Um, so it's been a, it's been just an incredible surprise for us how quick the uptake has been. Have you found the uh, challenges uh, with or the opportunities? I mean, is, is it uh, generational dependent? Do you find that certain companies, it's of a certain age, really get it, and other times you're just doing educating rather than selling? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right now, there's definitely, of course, a lot of education involved. And what we are finding is that the education piece is also being, you know, being taken so seriously, right? So, you know, for example, I was just talking to one of our brand partners the other day, and their CEO really was asking about, like, how can we utilize NFTs? How can we create loyalty through NFTs? So this education is being taken very seriously by these companies. So it's not like something they think, oh, it's a bubble here today, gone tomorrow. But they really understand the true sort of transformative nature of it and how that this will become part of the mainstream and, you know, and that they'd rather jump now than when it's too late. Well, all right. I don't mean to interrupt your your, your presentation. I just wanted to bring out those points. And I We'll just add that, you know, we live always live inside bubbles, but here we're talking about a shift and change to uh, the future of work and in some cases the future of work culture and where some core technologies become part of our lives, which we've seen historically happen. And this is just another one of those cases where I do believe the value creation is beyond where people see it today. And uh, when you ground it and show people that the, the NFTs can be issued as digital representation of their work, of who they are, what they've learned, and where they're going, you know, it's um, fascinating how things get repurposed. And at the same time, true value gets added. These are not necessarily NFTs they are going to put on OpenSea, but these are NFTs that represent true accomplishment uh, and recognition for who they are and what they do. Precisely, exactly. And also, if you think about, you know, so back in the day when an employee joined a company, you had the employee email and that was sort of their sense of belonging. And we really do think that that employee ID or that employee email will really transform itself into an employee wallet. And that wallet is really where you keep all your, you know, your recognitions, your badges, but also where you are, where you can give them access to DeFi, to being able to accumulate wealth in, in new ways that are non-traditional. And that is what they want to participate in now. Yeah, no, I, I have my own feelings about some of this. I just hosted a conference last week in the communication sector, and I, talking to people from different generations, I now explain NFT as uh, tech tofu. <laughs> it takes on the characteristics 
different characteristics depending upon the environment that it's in, and it's just amazing. So please, please continue with the presentation. I'm li listening attentively to you, to your voice. Uh, yeah, no, no, and these are great questions, and this has sort of really been, you know, where we are as well. Is that talking to enterprises and um, and really kind of guiding them through this, right? Because I think right now there's all this conversation, there's all this, all this sort of chit chat, but ultimately for mainstream adoption to happen, you will need to get these enterprises comfortable. So for us, you know, it's a familiar use case. It's a familiar use case that they have been doing for years and years and years in really old ways. So they, they're very grounded in the idea of, you know, we reward and recognize employees and customers, but now there's this whole new way of doing so. So that's really been, um, you know, a very sort of exciting journey for us because it's not something that's completely new to them, but it's something that's been there in their DNA for, you know, 60 plus years, but it's a whole new way of doing it. It's it's just fascinating, and you know, I and I think of other verticals where this just applies directly into as well. So it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see the market evolve and uh, and companies become more aware of what's possible today, and then the demand will just go beyond <laughs> your wildest dreams. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I also think you know, for us as well, you know, we're just starting off, right? So I think as as uh, Santiago even said earlier, as you said, that the white space is just so. It's still, you know, it's such, it's still such early days, and even our team, we're just starting off in the space and already seeing just so much excitement, you know. So right now, from Toffee, you have NFTs that you can attach to products, so physical products. We're bring, bringing our ecosystem of all our brand partners into it as well, and gift cards. Then we're unlocking crypto through it. But it just seems like the imagination is a limit here. Yes, I, I, it's the nice part is that when we're only when we're bound by imagination, truly anything is possible. The future is unwritten, and it's up to each of us to think about what we wish for, and then figure out how to find the path to manifest that wish. Yeah, and you know, for us, you know, speaking of Agoric, obviously for us, Agoric has been a like it's been just such a great partner. Like everybody's been so responsive and so helpful through our own journey. So it's been just such a pleasure to work with the Agoric team, from the developers to you know. Through, through all of you, Vanessa and Jeet have been phenomenal. So it's been just a great partnership for us as we are figuring out things on, on the Toffee side. How many people on the Toffee side were, were involved or actively involved in the core development of what you're, what you're offering? Yeah, actually some of our engineers are here as well. So, hey guys, thanks for joining. Um, we are a team of 20 people and uh, our entire team is really focused on product uh, engineering UI and UX. And from the engineering side, we've had uh, three core developers who have really been focused on the uh, on the development. But obviously, you know, the, U the, the thing is like UX, UI, which I would say is sort of the giants uh, or the legacy of Web2 are equally important because you really want to be able to give seamless customer experience to people, right? So right. that team has also been involved. And I think that's really where Web3 is obviously in its infancy. And that's where we can bring what we have collectively learned over the last, you know, years of building and, and actually like building, you know, and converting customers and building businesses and be able to bring that into Web3. That's fascinating. Um, and are, are your customers uh, all over the world or is there a specific geography that you like to focus on? We are U.S. based. So most of our clients, most of our enterprise customers are in the U.S. Uh, but now, obviously, with distributed teams and people basically being, you know, anywhere, we're finding that that use case is becoming very relevant to them as well. So we have clients whose teams are in India or even our team, you know, our, our team is based in Turkey as well. And, you know, so for them, having the logistics of local warehousing products and being able to send, and you know, is just such a nightmare. And this just opens up a whole new realm that not only is it on chain, um, but also the fact that you don't really need any of those sort of traditional commerce style, you know, ecosystems anymore. And 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 yeah, no, it's fascinating. What, what was the ins what was was there an original inspiration that led you down this path to say, gee, this is an opportunity for us. Let's act now. Yeah, definitely. So we were literally serving, you know, so we're serving all these clients. You have these big enterprises coming. There's obviously this big problem with um, with workplace, as you said, right? The future of work is yeah. Really and rapidly transitioning and then you know and just seeing sort of the rise of web3 and also what it what it really entails and what it like enables you to do and empowers you to do uh, it just made a ton of sense for us like the recent McKinsey report said on the state of employees that 80% of employees leave a company because they don't feel uh, any you know they're lacking appreciation or a sense of belonging right, right. so you know whole new emerging talent pool 
that fundamentally wants different things. They're fundamentally different by their very nature. And it just made so much. And that's what the companies are trying to go after. So for us, it was like this window of opportunity that we could serve that and really quickly get to market having the existing infrastructure and, uh, and really start serving the market today uh, for what it will need tomorrow. And uh, as far as the, you know, the, the, uh, the outstanding requests, um, ha- has, have you been guiding the process on the, on the, pro- on the, on the, um, well, the, 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 the product marketing or the product description or your customers as they give you, as you give different layers of, of functionality, they're now asking for more and more. Yeah, both really, right? Like we always, you know, we fundamentally believe that best products are built with your customers and they're constantly iterated upon. That's how they grow and sort of organically grow to serve the market demands. So we have been very much sort of initially we were guided by our own intuition and real excitement around Web3. And then we really started bringing our customers into the fold and really showing them that this is where we're going. And also actually your Agoric team as well have been great. We've really been brainstorming a lot with them as well. And, um, you know, and, and that's how we started sort of iterating, iterating, iterating uh, to get to where, what, what, what these enterprises are excited about and what they want to start using today, really. And, and, and I think for that reason, even Agoric, right, it's really helped us, you know, just having sort of JavaScript is such an integral part of the conversation, right? Like, you know, to be able to sort of empower the engineers who have been building for, you know, for years and being able to bring them into this, in, into the ecosystem is just so, it's so important so they can just focus on what they know best and really build out the platform. I actually, this is, I, I have a quick inter- question. I, I'm, poor Monica, we're not going to let her give her presentation, but. No, I, no, she's actually doing really good, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm she's, she's talking to her slides I, as we're talking. So okay, really fantastic. Cool. <laughs> I, I, I have a question because I, uh, around, you know, engineering onboarding, right? Um, you said, I think you said there are probably three engineers focused on the more Web3 side product at this market. What, yeah, what was it like? Farhan and VC are going to kill me. They're here. But uh, yes, three to four. So, yeah. So, so my question is, you know, what was their kind of general background and in, 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 in what did they what do they have to know to start? Um, were they, you know, traditional? Did they have kind of a blockchain experience in the background? Or was it something that they they came from more traditional Web2 background and had to come into Web3 in a way that was new to them? You know, I'm kind of just curious about how that process um, unfolded, because I think, you know, for our audience and, you know, future audience for the next few days, that's one of the big questions we want to address. Yeah, absolutely. No, very happy to talk about that. So really our background, as I mentioned, our team's background is very much rooted in product and um, in engineering. And Beant is also here who heads our product. And uh, so for them, like sort of coming from that place of understanding product, understanding the market needs and being and having been having been building for enterprise use cases for over five years now, we really came from that aperture of brands, of companies, of UX, UI that converts that seamless. And and really, how do we take this into Web3? So our team was tradition, very, you know, incredible coders, JavaScript coders. They are, you know, like the, that was their rooting, right? So they were rooted in Web2. And and being able to come into Web3 has been, you know, with Agoric has been just so easy for them. And I'm sure they can speak about that as well. Cool. Interesting. <laughs> And just a, just a follow-up question to the evolution of the product. Uh, as you bring um, the, your clients into the Web3 world and you have the wonderful offerings uh, with the NFTs and the, re- the rewards, do any of those companies have issues or, or ask you about security? Do they have like, you know, is, do you, I'm just curious from a, not, not that this is not secure, but do the, do the companies you're dealing with, do you have to go through a, any type of, learning curve or training to let them know how secure the nfts once they're minted created are because of the integrity of how things were you know, do, you know minted yeah yeah i know that's a good question as well i mean you know I, I guess it's been really helpful having built a brand having built you know smart gift which is a pretty well-known brand by now it's been really helpful because when you turn on clients like st loader live etc and you're literally sitting in sitting as a checkout on their product pages you go through insane amounts of data and security, privacy policies and all of that. So all those background checks. So I think that helped having that sort of credibility in the market. But uh, when we do talk to our clients now, yeah, it, it's definitely like it's there, right? Because they kind of just think, you know, are these, can people be, can, you know, things get hacked all the time? Can this wallet be hacked? Like how secure is it? What does it even mean? So, so there is an initial sort of 
I wouldn't say hesitancy, but definitely sort of a lot, you know, questioning and skepticism. But as soon as they sort of, you know, they understand that, oh, this is actually secure and, you know, it's uh, grounded. And it, it, then I think it's, it kind of just takes off where they're like, okay, we want to try this out. And once they try it out, and we really help them, right? We say like, hey, we're here and we'll help you send your first Figma wizard credentialing NFT. And once they try it out, then you just see how quickly they start wanting to discuss the SaaS pricing and how do we, you know, how can we do this on a daily frequent basis? What else can we do with this? So, so that's, yeah. So it's like this initial sort of you walk before you run thinking. I, I hear you. So it's really, so there's education so, just so that they have comfort. It's comfortable that you, they're dealing with a client, a customer like you know, with a with a with a company like yours, which has the experience, the the and the credentials and the market pr um, presence, so that they feel comfortable with you. Um, you know, uh, of your experience and your current learnings of moving from Web two to Web three, uh, for, the, for those people who are listening uh, right now and those who will be listening on playback who are thinking about moving forward in twenty twenty two to Web three but have been hesitant, do uh, you have any words of encouragement for them? I think Jeff, you saw my tweet about the red pill. So yes, I, I have obviously swallowed the red pill. So I don't know. Oh, I get that. I, <laughs> many have, but like you know, that said though, how you know, uh, and there's so many revelations happen once you're there. But you know, for those that are seeing the future happening, but they're hesitant because they're conservative, yet they don't want to miss out. Um, any one or two or three things that you could that you could encourage people? Yes, if not take the pill, at least come closer to the edge and you fall in anyway. Yeah, no, a, a great way to put it as well. I mean, that's where we were as well, right? Like being this, you know, being the CEO at Smart Gift and sort of serving all these brands and having the growth that we're having on our company engagement platform with traditional companies, we were also in that sort of that gap place where should we do this and this is going to be truly transformative and this is a big transition for us as a company and how we go out to market. So we were also there. And then I really started just embracing the Web3 community and the community has been just incredible. Like the way they kind of embraced us back, it, it became so obvious that it wasn't this lonely journey, but sort of, you know, it kind of feels like the early days of mobile commerce where things were happening, you knew it was going to completely transform e-commerce. And, you know, it kind of felt like that, that this is such a big thing happening that it, this is going to change the way things will be in the future. This is really like we are living the future. We're, we're creating the future, all of us. And we knew that we had to participate. And, um, and and the best part of it was, you know, communities like Agoric were there, Web3 communities were there and just so open that we could really feel comfortable going into this. And on the other side, brands and companies truly, truly, you know, and I can't sort of stress that enough, truly want to learn and want to know and want to participate if, you know, if they can in a, in a realistic way. Thank you for sharing that. So for, uh, for a company that has their own development team internally, how much time would you say it took for you, for you, for you to get, well, not comfortable, but, you know, set up to actually, you know, de um, start doing some of the core development work that you did that led to the product that you launched? The team we did, um, so obviously, like, you know, I think it really helps and saves a lot of time when you have a very well orchestrated team, which already has been jamming together for years and, you know, bringing products to the market. Right. That are that are being used by consumers. So I think that obviously helps because you don't have that sort of time that you have to, you know, because you already have everything built in right. and you obviously had a platform that was already serving the market. Uh, but Toffee was literally a month long endeavor for us and we're already starting to serve our early beta customers. Wow, wow, wow. I know, we've been hacking, we've been just on sprints. I think the guys haven't slept in days or in months, well, well weeks, I guess, but yeah, it's been all worth it. Well, congratulations. That sounds absolutely fantastic. And uh, and to be able to take that um, vision and listen to your intuition and drive and launch products, bringing them to beta is with such small windows is truly amazing. And what a reflection of both uh, your development partners and the team you're working with and, and, and the people who you're working, who, who you're serving. It sounds like a, just a wonderful place to be. So so I know that you've swallowed, you took the red pill, but been, it took a month. Uh, and, and today is now February 1st of 2022. Is there any one or two or three big lessons you learned that you want to share with others that will kind of like, you know, bring home what you thought you were going to do versus what you did? You know, at least for us, what's really helped is having um I, I think what gets overlooked a lot of times or for now at least is ux the importance of good design the import the importance of product design and i think that's really been our guiding post that we know we build good product we know we build product that's you know 
I think we I think we really do take pride in having built products that are the easiest to consume and integrate. And I think sort of coming from that place to expanding out into Web3 was um, was probably why we were able to do it so fast and, and get the excitement, you know, and engender the excitement that we are engendering. Um, and I think in terms of like, what are the learnings? I think the learnings really have been to lean in. Like we were really, we really did lean in to, to people who knew, you know, who, who, have, who are there, who have been there longer than us. And these people are just extremely, extremely willing to help because they want, the com- they want more people in the community. And I think everybody does want this to become mainstream. So to be able to bring enterprise utility, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's important for mainstream adoption. Absolutely is. And uh, thank you for leading the way and providing, you know, not just talk, but deliverables. And it's amazing. Uh, do you have a lot of plans for future uh, evolution of your product where it is today versus where you want to be in six months? Because of your product roadmap, how much have you delivered on it so far? Yeah, we're just, uh, we're literally just getting started. So we have absolutely, we have a lot of um, very exciting plans over the next six months. We're focusing very heavily on the wallet. And that's really where you'll see a lot of unlock happening. So I'm sure we'll be talking to your team uh, more and more as that starts to happen. That's terrific. Look, congratulations for the work you're doing and the work you're going to be doing. And I uh, just appreciate the magic that you bring to the table. And I love it when, when, when companies uh, speak about listening to their intuition and following that because I find there's magic there. Uh, it's it's wonderful. The tools work, the vision's there, but to hear, to know what to do and to execute. Congratulations. That's uh, one journey well done. And thanks for being an inspiration to help for others to, to on their transition to Web3. Uh, thank you, Jeff. No, thank you. And really, like, uh, you know, would love to continue the conversations. If anybody wants to reach out, please reach out. I'm very happy to talk, you know, um, sort of closely as well about our journey, trials and tribulations as well. So thank you. Uh, thank Amazing. you. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you. Great to be here. Bye.